Okay, I'm back. I apologize. I had too many files uh, that I had to remove. And now uh, the memory of my phone should be okay to complete this sermon. Uh, I don't know if this is probably the third part. Um, so the people of the Old Testament were waiting for the promised Messiah. That's what verse 2 is talking about. She being with child, the church being with child, cried, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. So even though the people of the Old Testament were not born again because Christ had not come yet, and they had not received the Holy Spirit, uh, they were nevertheless the children of God, God's chosen elect. And were children of God by promise, okay, um, by election. And they were waiting for their day of redemption, which was when Christ was to come, which would be uh, 4,000 years later from the time of Adam and Eve that Christ would come. Uh, when they died, the people of the Old Testament went to the bosom of Abraham, a resting place, otherwise known as Sheol, not hell, but Sheol, um, where they rested in the bosom of Abraham, not the very gates of heaven. And those were not opened until Christ had uh, came and shed his blood on the cross as, as a, a propitiation, a sacrifice on behalf of their sins and ours. Okay, so they were waiting for the Messiah is what that verse 2 is talking about. Now verse 3, there appeared another one, wonder or sign, once again better translated sign. Now let me back up just a second, there's a picture of this woman in Song of Solomon and uh, chapter 6 and verse 10. I would like to read that for you. And that's what, by the way, if you know, if you have any wonder uh, Song of Solomon, it's not it's not just a love story between a man and a woman. Um, it is a, once again, it's poetic language, and it is a story of Christ and the church. The woman being the church, the man uh, being the, being Christ. Okay. Um, and so in verse, let me just, um, Solomon, of course, you know, being a, a, a picture of uh, Christ. Uh, chapter 6 and verse 10. Who is she that looketh for, as, who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? So this was a picture of the church. Uh, she is to be brilliant, be shining like the sun in the day, and as the moon at night. Okay, um, I just wanted to tell you that, I'll share that with you, that Song of Solomon is a very uh, beautiful book, but you have to keep in mind that it's in reference to Christ and the church, which makes it even more beautiful, okay, and more precious. Now, coming to verse 3. There appeared another wonder or sign in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. So this great dragon, of course the dragon was always uh, pictured in red, uh, the, the picture of blood, um, red and, and black, and uh, blood and uh, evil, and blood and persecution, having seven heads and ten horns. You say, well what are these? Uh, understand the dragon is a portrait of the devil, but it's also a portrait of evil itself. Okay, the dragon was always a picture of evil, um, and always will be, uh, devouring men. You know, uh, the devil goes about like a like a lion or a dragon, uh, seeking whom he may devour. There's a few cross references I'd like to point out here. Um, Psalm 74:13 talks about a dragon 74 and 13 it says thou didst divide the sea by thy strength thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters so God is the one that breaks the head that bruises the head uh, that, that destroys the head of the dragons uh, not just the devil but all evil spirits 
uh, all demons, all evil men, women. God breaks them. He crushes their heads and in the pits of hell and in the lake of fire. Having seven, and while they're on earth, he's crushing them. Don't ever think they're getting away with anything. They're not. God is crushing them. Okay. Um, I'll see. Ezekiel 29.3 is another good cross-reference. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which has said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Here you see again this picture of this dragon, and of this evil spirit, Pharaoh, uh, is called the, the great dragon, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He's saying the river is his own. I made it for myself. Now, Pharaoh didn't make that river. God did. The devil didn't make it. God did. And God says, I will put hooks in thy jaws, and I will cause the fish of thy river to stick unto thy scales, and I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers, and all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness, thee and all the fish of the rivers. Thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of the heaven. Of the heaven. And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. Okay, so... When they took hold of thee by the hand, thou didst break and rend all their shoulder. And when they leaned upon thee, thou breakest and made all their loins to be at a stand. So here we see what Pharaoh did to the children of Israel, how he persecuted them, uh, how he afflicted them for the 430 years they were in bondage. Uh, but God says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee and cut off man and beast out of thee in the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste. They shall know that I am the Lord, because he hath said the river is mine, and I have made it. Behold, therefore I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate from the tower of Syene even unto the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. So once again, we see this uh, destruction of the devil of the of evil people and evil spirits by God himself okay. God watches over his people and God vindicates vengeance is mine said the Lord I will repay uh, another cross reference is found in Isaiah 51 9 and speaking of this dragon okay, very important you understand these uh, beast and you know animals and uh, strange creatures in the book of Revelation you have to put them in the proper context in order to understand them so 51 of verse 9 awake awake put on strength O arm of God awake as in the ancient days uh, in the generation of old Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Okay. Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, and hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto thine everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou, that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass? And forgettest the Lord thy Maker, has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Um, okay, so once again, you see... God being in control, 
the captive, verse 14, exiled hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. 15, but I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared, the Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. It is some beautiful words from the Lord concerning his people. Even when we have been attacked and are being attacked and will be attacked and persecuted uh, by the world, uh, by the flesh, by the devil, by the evil spirits, by evil people. And yet, through it all, God will preserve us. God will protect us and deliver us. Uh, okay, so he says, uh, there's one more cross-reference here, concerning the seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And that's in Revelation 17 and verse 3, 7, 10, and 12. Revelation 17, verse 3, He carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. There, once again, you see that, that theme of seven heads, ten horns. Um, okay, and the next one is verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which saith, which hath the seven horns, seven heads and ten horns. Verse ten, and there are seven, and there are seven kings. He says the uh, the beast. Uh, verse eight, and the beast that thou sawest was was and is not, and shall ascend up out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. They that dwell on the earth shall wonder his names not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast, it was, it is not. Um, here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five have fallen, one is. The other is yet to come. And when he cometh, uh, he, he continue a short space. And verse uh, 11, the beast that was and is, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, uh, goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest, ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as king one hour with the beast. He said, what is he talking about here? Well, <laughs> you're not to get lost um, in the numbers. Okay. The seven heads and the ten horns and the seven crowns that are upon the head of this dragon. A representative of evil spirits and evil people. Okay, Whether they are figures of authority, kings, presidents, um, magistrates that are working for the devil. Now, the devil, the evil spirits we cannot see, but the people who serve him we see. Uh, why are why is there war in the world? Because of um, evil people. And these evil people are being controlled by evil spirits. Okay, that's what this is about. Uh, seven being the number of perfection, of spiritual perfection. The devil being in uh, perfect control of his evil regime. Okay, his evil army uh, of men, women, and spirits. Okay, uh, he has this crown upon him. This, uh, this picture, uh, seven crowns upon his head, seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon those seven heads. Okay, so it's once again, it's a it's a imagery, not to be taken literally. But these things represent other things, okay? Just as I was speaking of. Verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and they cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. So his tail, the third part. Well, we see that uh, narrative 
in uh, Revelation 8 and verse 7. Let's back up just a bit. It says, uh, The first angel sounded, and there followed uh, hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. The third part of trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. So this third part uh, has a two-part meaning. Yes, it is true that the devil, uh, many angels followed him out of heaven. Okay, they rebelled with him and were thrown uh, to the earth uh, with him uh, out of heaven. Okay, that is true. And the same is true concerning all who serve him. They are that third part. Uh, concerning all the wicked of the world. The wicked men and women that serve him. Um, they are, so to speak, cast out from the presence of God who dwells in heaven to the earth, this baser world. And did you know this earth is going to burn with fire in the day of final judgment? And this is their, uh, this is as good as it gets for them, and it's only going to get worse for them as the day of judgment approaches. For both men, women, those who are alive now, those who have died, and the evil spirits, the devil included, and the evil demons. Okay. Um, the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So we see that in the Gospels. Uh, Herod, uh, ready to kill. You know, he had uh, all the children, two years and younger, murdered uh, in uh, Bethlehem because that's where they told him the, the, the scribes and he asked where is this going to happen and you know they said well out of Bethlehem and that's where he is to be born and of course Joseph was warned by an angel to flee into Egypt uh, before this took place and they were safe and protected but unfortunately uh, many, many children died under Herod's command. Now, the same was true with Pharaoh and Moses. When it was prophesied to uh, Pharaoh that a ruler was going to uh, take over Egypt, and Pharaoh had all the uh, firstborn males killed. Uh, Moses was spared, put in a basket in the River Nile, and, of course, you know the story. He became Pharaoh's daughter's son. And his own mom, Pharaoh's own mom, was his, got to be his handmaid to breastfeed him and, uh, while he was young. Until he was weaned, and then he was placed in Pharaoh's house. Um, okay, so this persecution... Once again, it's not just Moses, it's not just Jesus, but it is encompassing of all of God's children. He is ready to destroy and persecute any good. Uh, he is a murderer, he is a liar, the father of lies, deceiver, slanderer, accuser of the brethren. He hates everything that is good. Okay. Um, he is out to destroy anything and everything that is good. Uh, anything of God, it is his mission to destroy. Fortunately, he cannot do anything without the permission of God. So as long as we are walking in the will and obedience of the Lord, uh, we are safe and protected. Um, there is a psalm, I believe Psalm 131, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the light uh, upon the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hand unto iniquity. So, as long as we're walking in obedience, we're protected. When we get out of line and we become an enemy to ourselves and to God in our walk, uh, we begin doing evil, thinking evil, speaking evil. Okay, then we can expect retribution. All right, um, your sin will find you out. Numbers uh, 23, 
32. Uh, you know, you reap what you sow. And there is nobody perfect. We have all reaped evil. Um, and we have all sowed evil and we all consequently reap evil. But the goal is to stop sowing evil and to only sow good. Okay? Then we don't have to worry about God's hand of chastening hand or the wicked chasing us uh, through his hand. And ready to devour her child as soon as it was born. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God into his throne. Of course, this is Christ. The man child the, was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Uh, he smites the nations because he is God and he can rule with the rod of iron. Uh, he does rule with the rod of iron. He defeats his enemies. He is ruling and reigning even now as I speak. And he always has ruled, always will rule, and always will reign. And notice it says he was caught up uh, in, unto God. When, when he came from God. He went back to God and to his throne. Okay, so he is seated on the throne of God at the right hand of God the Father. There is this throne in heaven. You have God the Father and God the Son sitting next to each other. Okay, and Christ is at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is... Uh, in the throne as well. He, he is uh, ever present. He, he is that rainbow, that emerald green rainbow that is surrounding the throne. And the three persons and one God. Okay. Um, now it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness. Uh, there's one cross reference in Isaiah 7 14. I'd like to read. Isaiah 7, 14, and speaking of this uh, throne. Okay, let me turn to that real quick. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, this is in reference to God becoming a man in Isaiah 7. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to probably stop after this verse. And verse 6. And the woman fled, and I'll finish next week. The woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand and two hundred and three score days. Once again, this a uh, thousand and two hundred and three score days is one thousand uh, 260 days, which amounts to 42 months, which we just saw in the previous uh, chapters, and chapter 11, and verse 2 and 3, and I spoke about last week, the, the court is without the temple, uh, and the holy city they shall tread underfoot 40 and 2 months, three and a half years. Spoken of in uh, Daniel in chapter 7 and 12, which I'm not going to read. And, um, and it's also seen uh, in the um, 12 4. Uh, okay, uh, 42 months. It's a symbolic number, meaning a period of time. That's all it means. Not to be taken literally, okay? Um, and it's seen in other places as well uh, throughout Scripture. As I said, in Daniel 7, 12, uh, it is seen. And it is also seen in, um, where is it? Uh, in Revelation 11, 2, which I just read. So it's a symbolic number. Okay, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, and that they should feed her there 
1,208. So we have a place in the wilderness. We have a city of refuge. We are the woman, remember. God has prepared a place of refuge for us. Uh, remember, when the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt, um, they fled into the wilderness, didn't they? And not without uh, some serious uh, contest. Okay? Uh, remember, Pharaoh, uh, first he didn't want to let them go. Ten plagues. Uh, the hail, the fire, the frogs, the lice, the blood. Um, you know, and finally the death of the firstborn uh, children and of Egypt, not of the Hebrews, because they had the blood. They were covenant people. They had the blood of uh, the Passover lamb that was spread upon the doorpost. And the angel saw that and they were spared. That uh, was not the blood of Christ, but it was a, it was a picture of the blood of Christ which was to come uh, approximately 1,500 years later. Okay, Moses was around 1,500 B.C. And, uh, you know, they left Egypt. They spoiled the Egyptians and took their gold and silver and stuff. Uh, they wanted them out, you know. They said they were going to borrow it, and, of course, they never returned. Um, but Pharaoh came after them. And of course, you know the story of the Red Sea, God opening the Red Sea for them. Great miracle between the sea and Pharaoh's army. 